Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7C practice problem on the topic of uh, Snell's Law Optics. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we're gonna be working with. A ray of 450 nanometers blue light is incident from air uh, on an isosceles right triangular prism made of sapphire and is equal to 1.77 as shown in the picture below. And then you get a picture. The instructions are on the picture above, draw the path of the ray once it enters the prism and then briefly explain below why you drew the picture the way you did. For the purposes of this problem, you may assume that unless the ray is totally internally reflective, all energy of any incident rays goes into the refracted ray. Okay, so as you can see, I have my uh, picture over here and I have my two pieces of instruction. So the first instruction is that this is an isosceles right triangular prism. Just a little bit of a trig review. Whenever a triangle is isosceles, that means that two angles are exactly the same, which would be these two angles. And if it's uh, specifically a right isosceles triangle, then that means that the third angle, which is the one that's not equal to the other two, otherwise it would be equilateral, is 90 degrees. And because this is 90 degrees and this is isosceles, which means that these two have to be equal to each other, then these two are 45 degrees each. Now, these angles aren't given on the problem, but the problem does say that this is an isosceles right triangular prism. Now, for the second part of the instructions, we um, it basically says that we're never going to have a little bit of a split between refracted and reflected. It is either total internal refraction, a reflection, otherwise it all bounces, uh, it all goes as refracted. So this is my incident ray, and basically I just have to go uh, by bounce by bounce or interface by interface, figure out what happens each time. So let's just go ahead and start. So for the first interface, For the first interface, we're going from air to sapphire, so we're going from a low end to a higher end. Whenever you're going from low to high, you don't have to check to see if you're going to have total internal reflection. You don't need to check because it's not going to happen. This specific phenomenon, total internal reflection, only happens if you go from high to low. But because we're going from low to high, we don't even need to worry about that. All of the ray is going to be refracted. So everything is going in. Now, at what angle it goes in? Well, if you remember the rule that you've, you should always be drawing a perfectly perpendicular line, imaginary line, To see for your angles, you'll see that your incident ray is equal to zero. Now, using Snell's law, uh, uh, sine angle two, you'll see that if your incident ray is zero, then that means that you're refracted. also has to be equal to zero because sine of zero is equal to zero, which means that this side has to be equal to zero, but N2 is 1.77, so the N is not the zero. Therefore, this angle has to be zero so that this entire side is zero as well. So this ray is basically just gonna go straight up. This ray is going to go straight up like this. 
And we're gonna get to our second interface, interface, I'm sorry, or bounce or whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna call it interface. Again, we need to draw a perfectly uh, perpendicular line to the surface. So I'll do my, I'll do my best. So this is my uh, drawn perpendicular line. Maybe I should extend this a little bit like this. And uh, this angle over here is going to be my new incident ray like this. So now what is this angle over here? Well, this angle over here is actually very easy to find out, right? Because this is uh, 45 degrees over here, which means that, uh, and this is 90. So this is a, a tiny, uh, right? It's also a triangle, right? Because this is 90, it goes straight up. It's 90 degrees with respect to the surface of the prism. This is 45. So this basically means that this is 45. So that this little triangle is complete. And because these lines make 90 degrees from each other, that's the definition of the imaginary line, that it has to be perfectly perpendicular, then that means that this angle is also 45 degrees. My new incident angle is exactly 45 degrees. Now, this also means that this angle is 45 degrees, but I don't think that I'm going to need that for the rest of the problem. But it, it does mean that this should also be 45 so now for our second interference, let's just go ahead and uh, figure this out. Um, interface, I said interference. I knew that I said something wrong. Interface. I'm sorry if I've been saying interference. I'm still, I still have the interference problems in my head. I did them recently. But no, these are interfaces, not interferences. Um, so for our second interface, my incident angle is 45 degrees. Now, like I said before, the total internal reflection only happens when you go from high to low. And on this second interference, we do need to check because we are going from 1.77 to 1. So how do we check? Well, there's this thing called a uh, critical angle, which you should all have learned about on DL. If you are unsure about what this is, make sure that you go to DL because there's an, an entire activity devoted to it, but it basically, it basically symbolizes the angle at which uh, total internal reflection starts happening. And we do, and we figure it out by putting 90 degrees on our exit angle. So this, so in order to figure it out, I would do 1.77 sine of my critical angle is equal to one because air is one sine of 90 degrees. So this is what you have to uh, put into the equation in order to find this angle. So my critical angle is just sine inverse, let's see. Um, so sine inverse of sine of 90 times 1, which I'm not going to write, divided by 1.77. So 34.40 degrees. Now, for this, um, for this scenario, my incident angle, which is equal to 45 degrees, is greater than my critical angle, which is equal to 34.40 degrees. Whenever this happens, whenever this one is uh, greater, this means that we are going to see total internal total internal reflection. 
What does this mean? Well, this all of this energy is going to bounce and none of it is going to go out as refracted. If you have total reflection, that means you don't have refraction. So because there is no refraction, all of the energy goes into reflected. So nothing is going to go out. All of it is going to reflect. Now, how is it going to reflect? Well, let's remember that because of Snell's law, whenever you have reflection, your incident angle is the same as your reflected angle because if you use Snell's law reflected means that you stay within the same uh, interface so if n1 and n2 are exactly the same that means that angle 1 and angle 2 are exactly the same so incident that reflected have to be the same this is a general rule for reflected reflected is always going to be the same as incident so this is going to be 45 degrees as well So 45 and 45, this means that this is a 90 degrees, 45 degrees. And now we get to our third interface. Our third interface is again, sapphire versus air. Now I have to draw again my 45, uh, my uh, perpendicular imaginary line, I'm sorry. So my perpendicular imaginary line goes like this and um, there are you know a number of ways to figure this out but as you can see uh, this angle has to also be 45 degrees this angle has to be 45 degrees because if this is 45 and these are 90 then that means that this is 45 so this is another isosceles right triangle which means that this has to be 45 and because this line, this imaginary line is perpendicular, then that means that my new incident angle is 45 degrees as well. So this is geomet the geometry of this particular problem. And as you can see, because we have 90, 90, 90, this has to be 90. So this is actually a perfect uh, rectangle. I don't, I don't know if it's a square. I don't think it's a square, but it's definitely a rectangle because all of the angles inside are 90 degrees like this now uh the third interface i don't really have to do anything because the third interface is exactly the same as the second one We have the exact same uh, incident angle. We have the exact same incident, uh, you know, sapphire to air. So all of the conditions are the same, which basically means that first of all, I will have to check for total internal reflection. I would use the exact same ends. I would get the exact same critical angle. My incident angle is still bigger. So nothing is going to go out of here. So everything is going to just bounce back. So everything is going to bounce back. Like this. And now we just have to figure out our fourth interface, which is getting out of here. So for our fourth interface, um, let's just put it in here. My incident angle is equal to zero degrees because if I draw my perpendicular line with the new incident angle, which the new incident angle is the previous reflected angle, it makes zero, zero degrees with my imaginary line. So my new angle is zero. Now, I do have to check for total internal reflection. Now, total internal reflection doesn't happen because my critical angle, again, I'm going from sapphire to air, 
is um, 34.40. So we, nothing is gonna bounce back over here. Everything, it's all refraction. So it all has to go out as refracted because per the instructions, unless you have total internal reflection, total internal reflection, I'm sorry, everything refracts. So because of this part of the instructions, I don't have total internal reflection. This is smaller. Therefore, everything has to go out. And uh, using the same logic as over here, if my incident angle is zero, then my ref refracted angle is also zero because on Snell's law, if this side is zero, this side has to be zero as well. So basically it all goes straight out. And this is the end of my problem. It all goes just uh, straight out like this. And that would be the end of my problem because, you know, there's air in here, but like there's no uh, new interface to work with. So this basically just had four interfaces that I had to check. For three of them, I did have to check for total internal reflection. You always need to make sure that you are checking every single time that you go from high to low in terms of um, and in terms of index of uh, refraction. It's super easy to check. You just have to do this little uh, thing to find your critical angle and then basically if your incident is higher then yes you have total internal reflection if your incident is smaller then no you don't have it so i hope that you guys found this uh, content useful if you did please make sure to leave a like and i will see you guys on the next video